Hello everyone, it's Christine here and we're back for the stitch along and we're going to be doing a stitch called Hem Stitch Antique. Now it's not something I've done before um, and it is a little bit fiddly but I think I've got it simplified um, to be able to explain it to you. So what we're going to end up with, just so you've got a picture in your mind, is um, some threads pulled out of our fabric to create um, so that we've only got the down threads and we've pulled out the threads that run across the fabric and then we're going to end up with little bundles um, bundled up with our cotton um, along where we've pulled those threads out. So the first step you'll need to do which I've already um, pre-prepared but I'm going to show you how it's it's done is select an area that runs across your fabric where you're going to take out the cross threads um, and I've started doing it up here because I will need another section eventually for, I think, tomorrow's stitch. And what I'm doing is popping up near the edge um, and pulling one thread out at a time. So that one has come out okay. Because this is in linen, I found out that the threads um, won't always pull all the way across and I'll have to then go and pick up the ones that have broken off partway along. So I'm just using my needle to pick up one of those cross threads get an end of it and then just gently see this one um, broke so I'm going to have to then go further across find where it um, broke and then pick it up again with the tip of my needle so pick it up like that and then start to pull that through and again I only got a small section of it now you might have better luck if your fabric is a pure cotton because cotton is um, stronger than the linen I think or particularly this particular type which I chose because it's a more sort of like a wove, woven-y um, more open-y sort of weave because I thought that might work better but um, it is yeah taking quite a bit to get an entire row pulled it's not just one pull of the thread I then have to um, go and pick up the yeah the broken broken threads but that's okay you just work um, you get there in the end it's just some sometimes there'll be a little bit more more tedious um, so I'll be interested to hear how others others go um, and you could obviously um, I think it is better to start at the ends but you can also pick them up part way part way through as I'm doing here with the one at the top and then I'm pulling it both directions at the one time but even then it's still it's still doing that little thing where it um, tears rather than coming coming smoothly. I'll just show you a few more. It does sometimes take a little bit to pick pick the thread up. See that one? Yeah, no, again, only a small amount out at a time. So yeah, just you've got to work your way across. At least it's easy to see where the threads are still in the in the fabric and just to yeah pull them out section by section. But eventually you'll be left um, with just the down threads like you can see there. What you'll then want to do is create yourself a little hem. So what I did was um, ironed along one of my areas of the blue. So I got a nice sort of sharp edge and then I folded, folded that edge up like that. And then I put some little tacking stitches along that edge to hold it in place. So as you can see, I've got a hem sitting right on the edge where those those pulled threads are so you'll need to do that and just do a yeah quite a doesn't need to be a particularly um, tight running stitch just a stitch to hold that hem down in place like that one is get rid of my endy bits and then i'm thinking i'll use this vintage crochet thread um, to do the stitching and hold the little bundles in place so i'll thread up my needle and we're going to start right to left because apparently it's worked right to left um, and it says on the wrong side of the fabric. Now this one doesn't particularly have a wrong or a right side so I'm not too worried about that. But I'm going to pop up um, from just below um, the hem over here and then I'm going to bring my needle up in the space created in the hem and pop out of the top of the hem so where there's that sort of ironed line. Now I'm not using, not having a knot on my um, crochet thread. I'm actually going to pull the little tail into the hem and I'm going to do a little back stitch um, at the starting point to hold, 
to hold my thread in place and I'm actually going to do just a second one even though the book says only one I prefer to know for sure um, that my thread is going to hold hold in place so that can now just yeah be left to pull right through so what we now need to start to do is to gather up our little bundles. Now the book suggests that you count your threads. I think I'm just going to do it by eye because I think otherwise it's going to get really tedious for you. So I think I'll gather up about that many in one go. So I've passed my needle, take the needle from right to left behind the fabric threads, collect the required number of threads onto the needle and bring the needle to the front. So I'm going to do that. Pull the th thread through. So we've gathered our little bundle and then take the needle from right to left behind the bundle of threads re-emerge re just below the last thread in the bundle catching the hem. So I'm going to come behind the threads again and I'm going to catch the hem with my needle. And then pull the thread firmly until the bundle of thread and threads is tightly grouped together. Obviously helps if I don't catch on the edge. So I'm pulling until the bundle of threads is tightly grouped together, which you can see it is there. So for our second bundle, we're going to do the same. We're going to take the needle and pick up about the same number of threads. Again, you could count, um, but you can do it by eye if you want, like me. And then we're going to bring the needle again behind that same bundle and this time we're going to put a little stitch into the hem as we come through. I'm going to pull the thread through gently but firmly and make sure we get that nice little wrap around the bundle. I'm going to get rid of the other threads so they're not in my way while I'm, while I'm working including the ones that are hanging down the side of the fabric. Okay, and then we continue across and we keep picking up little bundles of about the same number of threads. So again, passing behind and then bringing the needle back behind again and putting a little stitch in the hem as we come through. So you're really going behind the bundle twice and we're making sure that thread comes right down to the bottom pulling through firmly and then picking up the next bundle I hope you can see this okay um, but you're just picking up little bundles by passing your needle behind behind the thread that's a thicker thicker bit of thread in the mix but we'll do that anyway and then again passing the needle behind your little bundle and putting that little stitch into the into the hem Which is really what anchors that little bundle stitch in place and it does tend to want to sit a little bit higher up so just sort of position it down to the bottom as you pull it pull it tight and then getting your next bundle I'm sure when this was done properly they did actually count all the count all the pieces but life is too short for that I think we're just after a nice little effect and so maybe if you had a more open weave fabric it might be easier to count the count the pieces. Okay, so it's the first pass behind the threads and then a second pass and catching the the hem with a little stitch. And then pulling through firmly to get it anchored around the bottom. And then our next bundle over, pass our needle behind it and then do our next little stitch that catches, catches the hem.
Then the next bundle, catch the hem, bring the little stitch out of the hem and pull our thread through and make sure it angles to the bottom. Not convinced if I'll do this stitch again, but maybe it will be handy to have in the, the repertoire. Depends how pretty it looks when it's all finished. Certainly, I mean, it's interesting to learn something. I haven't done that sort of pulling out fibres of a piece of fabric, so it's kind of good to know it at least, I suppose. I suppose that's the bonus of this. You can kind of learn the stitches and then you go, do I want to do this one again or will I just say, yep, good, learnt that one, move on. They don't all have to become our, our favourites, regular stitches. But at least when someone says hem antique stitch, you'll, you'll know what it is. Oops, make sure I catch the hem, that's the main thing. I sometimes forget that I've got to put that little stitch in the, in the hem. I find if I put my finger there, it just helps to get the stitch to sit right down the, the bottom. So there we go. So I reckon that's probably, I could do a few more actually. I, um, Although that we're probably at enough time, actually, um, I will call it call it quits there. But um, I think you've seen enough to know know the technique. Just make sure you don't get other things caught caught in it. Um, and it is quite pretty. It could be good if you were doing. I don't know. They almost look like little upside down um, tassels. Maybe if we're doing a curtain or something. It is. It is pretty. I'll keep. I'll keep doing it. Um, at least a ways over. Um, to fit into the the book, I've still got to write the hem stitch. And then tomorrow we're going to be doing a different version of hem stitch, um, which is serpentine version. And we'll end up with something that looks like looks like that. So yeah, if you are um writing your hem stitch on, leave space um to do two different versions of hem stitch today's and tomorrow's. Thanks everyone, and I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.